Love is believing that right wins over wrong. Love is trusting that a hug can change someone's day. Love is believing that kindness can soften a hurting heart. Love is trusting that God cares about our pain and suffering. Let us come and worship Christ, who gives us the Advent gift of love. asked me to choose a symbol that represents love for my home and I was racking my brain trying to come up with the perfect thing because I've been fortunate enough to have grown up in a family that has so many symbols and objects uh, that represent love and comfort to me and especially around the holidays there's just so many little things that I could do a million speeches on um, but the object that just kept coming into my mind that I believe is the perfect symbol for love is actually my family Christmas tree. So every single year we put on some Christmas music, we go into our basement, get up the big bucket of ornaments, and we come around the tree and decorate as a family. I have some of my favorite memories decorating this tree all together during the season. And some of these ornaments on here I made when I was younger, or my brother and I made together, or we got at a holiday, or some other random occasion. And every single thing on here just has its own memory that I've associated with it over the years. Some of them we even got from uh, family or friends um, that are very near and dear to our heart. So every symbol on this tree makes up for overall the perfect symbol of love to me. And I think it's a perfect analogy for love that it's not just a single moment in time. It's the memories that we make with the people along the way. So now I would like for you to take a few moments around your house or outside of your house to find something that represents love to you. You can take a moment here. If you live with someone, pause this video and talk about what you chose and how it represents love to you. If you're on your own, take a few minutes to write in a journal or reflect on why this symbol represents love to you. You can pause the video here. We are grateful that through Jesus' birth, 
which we celebrate the season, God gives us the gift of love. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus, your gift of love to the world. Remind us of how much we are loved by you and help us to work with Jesus to bring love to those whose hearts are broken or filled with anger and pain. Let this candle remind us that the light of Christ is shining in our hearts and can be spread from us to others when we live in love. Amen. Imagine, if you will, that the angels who appear in our Advent stories are given instructions from God before they deliver their messages. Imagine the angel who visits Joseph unrolling his scroll and reading his message for this day. Alright, let me see what my mission is for today. It's been a pretty slow week, so I hope that there's some excitement for today. Go to some shepherds who will be working in a field. Tell them to go into town and look for a home which keeps farm animals out back. There they will find a baby who is going to change the world. You might not convince them right away, so you should be prepared to bring reinforcements. Well, I did ask for excitement, and that certainly seems like excitement. Don't think I've ever visited a group of anyone before, let alone shepherds. Let me think about this. These are going to be hard-working, no-nonsense kind of guys. Maybe I should just appear to one of them and get him to tell the other shepherds. No, that, that's not going to work. The others will just laugh and think that that guy's been sneaking in a drink between shifts. Okay, let me think about this. Well, really the whole thing sounds ridiculous. How can a baby change the world? Especially a baby that is born in such a run-down and lowly location. But when you think of it, God has always favored the meek and the struggling. And God is always surprising us with who and what he will use to advance his vision of peace, justice, and love for the world. Okay, let me think about how to get these guys on board. Should I show up quietly or with some dramatics? I think the latter is better. I will bring the brightest light I can, and maybe I should practice my singing. That always gets attention. La, 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 la. And I think God is right. I better get a few others for backup. They can also sing, so these guys get the idea of how big this really is. Now, let me think of a message I should leave them with. Pay attention. No, that's, that's a little obvious. Be ready. No, I think we've used that one before. Hmm. Wait a minute. I think I've got it. Shepherds, be amazed. This is a story from long ago about a young woman named Mary who really loved God and her people. This is also a story about angels visiting many different people to remind them that God has a plan for their lives. These angels reminded Mary and the others that God was not going to abandon them, but instead 
would send someone to teach them the way of love, hope, peace, and joy. This is the Christmas story that we tell every year at this time. It helps us remember that God is with us as well. Long ago, about 2,000 years ago, when King Herod ruled Judea, now part of Israel, God sent the angel Gabriel to a young woman who lived in the northern town of Nazareth. The girl's name was Mary, and she was engaged to marry Joseph. The angel Gabriel said to Mary, Peace be with you. God has blessed you and is pleased with you. Mary was very surprised by this and wondered what the angel meant. The angel continued, Don't be afraid. God has been very kind to you. You are going to have a very special baby boy, and you will call him Jesus. He will be God's own son, and his kingdom will never end. Mary was very afraid, but she trusted God. She replied to the angel, Let it happen as God has decided. Gabriel also told Mary that her cousin Elizabeth, whom everyone thought was too old to have children, would have a baby boy. Elizabeth's baby boy would prepare the way for Jesus. Mary said goodbye to her family and friends and went to visit her cousin Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah. Elizabeth was very happy to see Mary. She knew that Mary had been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. An angel had already told Zachariah that Elizabeth's baby would prepare people to welcome Jesus. He was to be called John. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned home to Nazareth. Joseph was worried when he found out that Mary was expecting a baby before their marriage had taken place. He wondered if he should cancel their wedding. Then, one night, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Do not be afraid to have Mary as your wife. Mary has been chosen by God to be the mother of his son. The baby will be named Jesus, which means Savior, because he will save people. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had told him to do and took Mary as his wife.
At this time, the land where Mary and Joseph lived was part of the Roman Empire. The Roman Emperor Augustus wanted to have a list of all the people in the empire to make sure they paid their taxes. He ordered everyone to return to the town where their families originally came from and enter their names in a register or census. Mary and Joseph traveled a long way about 120 kilometers from Nazareth to Bethlehem because that is where Joseph's family came from. Most people walked, but some people were lucky enough to have a donkey to help carry the goods needed for their journey. Joseph and Mary traveled very slowly because Mary's baby was due to be born soon. When they reached Bethlehem, they had problems finding somewhere to stay. So many people had come to register their names in the census that every house was full and every bed was taken in all of the guest rooms. Even at the inn, they were told by the innkeeper that there was no room in the inn. The only place for them was with the animals in a stable. So, in the place where the animals slept, Mary gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. In those days, it was the custom to wrap newborn babies tightly in a long cloth called swaddling clothes. Jesus' bed was the manger that the animals ate their hay from.
Jesus laid down his sweet head, the stars in the sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the In the hills and fields outside Bethlehem, shepherds looked after their sheep through the long night. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. The glory of God shone all around them, and the shepherds were very, very scared. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I have good news for you and everyone. Today, in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born for you you will find the baby lying in a manger. Then more angels appeared, lighting up the sky. The shepherds heard them praising God, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to everyone on earth. When the angels had gone, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem to see what has happened. So the shepherds went to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph. The baby Jesus was lying in a manger, just as they had been told. When they had seen him, they told everyone what the angel had told them. Everyone who heard the story was astonished. Then the shepherds returned to their sheep, praising God for sending his son to be their savior. When Jesus was born, a brand new bright star appeared in the sky. Some wise men in faraway countries saw this star and wondered what it meant. They were very clever men and they studied the stars. They had read in very old writings that a new star would appear when a great king was born. They set out to find the new king and bring him gifts. The wise men followed the star towards the country of Judea. When they got to the capital called Jerusalem, they began to ask people, where is the child who is born to be the king of the Jews? Herod, the king of Judea, heard this, and it made him very angry to think that someone might be going to take his place as king. Herod sent a message to the wise men. They were told to go on following the star until they found the baby king. His message was, When you have found him, let me know where he is, so that I can go and worship him. But Herod actually had a very evil plan in mind, which was to hurt the new king. The wise men found Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus. They bowed and worshipped him. They had brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The wise men were then warned in a dream by God not to go back to Herod, so they returned home to their countries in the east by a different way. When the wise men had gone, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, get up. Take Jesus and Mary and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is searching for Jesus. So Joseph got up, took Jesus and Mary, and they left for Egypt. When Herod realized that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was furious. He gave orders to kill all the boys aged two or younger in Bethlehem and the surrounding area. 
This was to make sure he killed the new king, as his plan to find the location of Jesus from the wise men had failed. Once Herod had died, Joseph had another dream in which an angel appeared to him. The angel said, Get up, take Jesus and Mary back to Israel, for now it is safe for Jesus to be there. So Joseph, Mary, and Jesus traveled back to Israel and lived in the town of Nazareth. So my sweet little ones, that is the Christmas story. God sent his son into the world that peaceful starlit night. While the village of Bethlehem slept, hope was born. We know that this baby is Jesus, Christ the Lord. The hope he brings shines through the darkness. The forgiveness he offers is free to anyone who believes. And the life Jesus gives never ends. May the wonder of that silent night forever live in all of our hearts. we thank you for this time together. We celebrate the gifts of these children dressed as angels and shepherds, magi, and a holy family, joined by sheep and goats and a donkey, recreating a story that is thousands of years old and yet timeless if it lives in our hearts. Thank you for this reminder of hope this story which speaks of your light shining like a brilliant star into the darkest night sky. This has been a difficult and confusing year, O God, and we ask for your strength and your love to pierce the darkness with your light. And at the same time, we thank you for lessons we have learned, for changes of heart. 
We thank you for new discoveries and hope restored when all hope seemed lost. As nature around us prepares for the long sleep of winter, God, we pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are dying or who have died. We pray for those who are grieving and feeling the burden of many losses. In these colder, darker days, we remember those who are feeling left out or neglected. Those who have found the months of restrictions a heavy burden, especially those who live alone or those who are isolated and far away from family and loved ones. O oh God, reach out to all of us in Christ and give us hope for the living of these days. God of joy, we also thank you for moments of joy and celebration. And even though they will come to us this year in a different way, help us to receive the happy gatherings, even if they are small or held outdoors in a backyard or around a campfire. We know this year will be different and help us all to adjust by focusing not on what we don't have, but what we do have. Help us to continue to do all we can to protect the most vulnerable in our world and be with everyone who continues to work tirelessly in all the places we need in order to survive and get through this time. Be, though, be with those in hospitals and nursing homes, on farms and grocery stores, those working in electrical places and keeping our hydro on, those who are serving as emergency personnel, those in mental health and addiction services, for our police officers and firefighters, be with our military as they prepare to deliver vaccines across our country, be with everyone everywhere who is trying to spread love and care at a more rapid rate than this virus is spreading. Loving God, you call us to live in community with one another. You form us into families and circles of friendship and communities of neighbors and strangers. Help us to live, especially in this season. Help us all to live up to your call, to be open, to be kind, to be brave, and to be amazed that you will work through us as you did long ago through the birth of a humble child. And so we offer this prayer in the name of him who was born in such humble place many years ago and who, when he grew up, taught us all to pray together this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>